Senator Ted Kennedy rose from the shadows of his famous brothers to become a stalwart in Congress and one of the most recognizable and influential lawmakers of his time. It is wrong for the administration to beat the drums of war. Edward M. Kennedy was the youngest of nine children in what would become one of the most famous and powerful political families in American history. A graduate of Harvard and Virginia Law School, he cut his political teeth helping his older brother, John F. Kennedy, run for president in 1960. Two years later, at the age of 30, he himself was elected to fill the Senate seat his brother had vacated. With that win, the Kennedy family had risen to the top of American politics, having one brother in the White House, another Robert as Attorney General, and Ted as a member of Congress. It's a post he would never leave, getting re-elected eight times. Although more prominent seats on the Senate floor became available, he never abandoned the desk his brother once occupied. Ted Kennedy helped the family carry on after his brother was assassinated in Texas in 1963. He was severely injured himself the next year when a plane he was in crashed, killing two other people on board. Four years after that, his brother Robert was assassinated while running for president. The weight of the family fell solely on him. My brother need not be idealized or enlarged in death beyond what he was in life. To be remembered simply as a good and decent man who saw wrong and tried to right it, saw suffering and tried to heal it, saw war and tried to stop it. Those of us who loved him and who take him to his rest today pray that what he was to us, what he wished for others, will someday come to pass for all the world. In 1969, Kennedy ran headlong into scandal. He drove his car off a bridge on Chappaquiddick Island in Massachusetts. While he was able to get out, the passenger in his car, Mary Jo Kopechny, died. Kennedy later pleaded guilty to leaving the scene of an accident and was given a suspended two-month sentence. Whether some awful curse did actually hang over all the Kennedys. He deflected calls for him to run for the White House, instead building up his stature in the Senate, where he was fast becoming one of the most effective Democratic leaders. He did test the presidential waters in 1980 when he tried to wrest the nomination away from incumbent President Jimmy Carter. He won 10 primaries that year, but later bowed out of the race. He returned to the Senate where he continued to gain power and served as the chairman of the Health and Education Committee. He also held seats on the powerful Armed Services Committee and the Judiciary Committee. However, tragedy wouldn't leave the family alone. He was again called on to help the country mourn this time after the passing of his nephew, John F. Kennedy Jr. In 2006, Time Magazine recognized him as one of America's 10 best senators and stating that he had a record of legislation that affected the lives of nearly every single American. Kennedy returned to the presidential spotlight in 2008, but not as a candidate. I have seen him in the Senate. He will keep us strong, defend the nation against real threats. He announced his staunch support for fellow Senator Barack Obama. Later that year, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. At the time of his passing, he was second only to Senator Robert Byrd of West Virginia as the most senior member of the Senate. Ed Donahue, The Associated Press. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.